what is your position in relation to preservation of Quran? Is, for example, Hafsa and Asim, the way Hafsa and Asim, do you see it as preserved, munazzal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every single student of knowledge knows who studies ulum al Quran that the mm-hmm. most difficult topics are Ahruf and Qiraat. And the concept of Ahruf and the reality of Ahruf and the relationship of the Rathmatic Mus'haf with the Ahruf and the preservation of the Ahruf. Is it one? Is it three? Is it seven? And the relationship of the Qira'at to the Ahruf. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. Many people are aware who listen to my lectures that I've mentioned the crises that happened to me at Yale. Now, for the first time, I'm telling you here. What was the crisis? I mentioned it, referenced it, but I never explicitly said it. Why didn't I say it? Because it should not be said in public. And I would never bring it up in public. And I don't think it is wise to bring it up in public. This was the issue. That the issue of ahruf and preservation and qira'at and relationships between them, these are very, very difficult issues. And the most advanced of our scholars, they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered yeah. questions in there. I don't want to get yeah. into that issue. Okay, fine. Why do I not want to get to that issue? Here's the point. These issues should only be discussed amongst people yeah. who know what the Qira'at are. What was the crisis? The crisis was very simple. And by the way, this is now a well-known open secret amongst many Muslim graduate students and, and, and academics around the world. And yeah. this is well-known. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qira'at cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ta'ala. And that's great, alhamdulillah. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true, and this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat, and they'll bring you athar, and then you add to that very well-known issues of, I don't even want to be explicit. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. Holes in it. More and more professors and academics are writing stuff and they're bringing forth issues. Their level of now knowledge is leaps and bounds above what it used to be, you know, 100 years ago, you know. And by and large, our ulama in the Eastern world are not aware, by and large, of what's going on in the Western side of things. And they're not answering those questions in a manner that it needs to be answered. And this is something all of us that are in academia fully acknowledge. This issue... Uh, of Ahruf and Qira'at has troubled the Ummah from the very beginning of time. It's nothing new. And there are 15 opinions about this. None of them fully answer all of the questions that are raised. Some of them answer more than others. So the issues of the relationship, of the origins, of the ikhtilaf and all of this should only be discussed amongst those who are familiar with this science. <laughs> I can't answer this question in a 20-minute interview, nor is yeah, it wise yeah, okay. to do so, which is why I never brought this topic up myself. You will not find one lecture of mine about this issue. It should never be brought up in public. <laughs> this is not something you discuss amongst the masses, ya akhi. It's not wise. You don't understand qiraat. Let it be. That's why even when they accuse me, I didn't defend myself because I would rather people have doubt about me than the Quran. What is happening in the last few years is not me anymore. It's the Western academics. These, these problems are now becoming mainstream. If I were to give you a blank mushaf, yeah, and, uh, and tell you to write what is munazzal verbatim from Allah into that mushaf with no human interference, 
would you write something which corresponds? It's not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. After we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions. No problem. It is Kalamullah. What, 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 what would you write? Uh, 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 let's not, let, let's, you, you're pushing me. All of the Qiraat are the Quran. All of the Qiraat are authentic. Alhamdulillah. Leave it at that, ya akhi. Beyond this, honestly, I have no problem. We'll have a discussion or take my class.